Good morning, brothers and sisters. Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And welcome to our worship time and Sunday morning message. And this morning, our topic is the secret to peace. And our key verse is found in Isaiah 54, verse 10. For the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from you, nor shall my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord who has mercy on you. This is a wonderful promise that the Lord God gave the Israelites in their desperate situations. It is a promise that still holds true today to each one of us. We have seen how the Lord worked in the nation of Israel as he made a covenant of peace with them. In the rise and fall, the Lord kept his covenant of peace. Even though they drifted away from him, but when they returned and asked for mercy, the Lord granted his compassion. Likewise, in our rise and fall, our ups and downs, the Lord will grant us his peace if we learn to look up to him. I'd like to share with you a story or a news some time ago why a successful young man would take his own life. What went wrong? As a young boy, he was very brilliant. He always scored high in science and math. He went to the University of California for his MBA, got a high paying job and settled in US. <clears throat> and afterwards, he got married to a beautiful girl and he was able to buy a big house with five rooms and luxury cars. He had everything that made him successful, but what went wrong? Why he took his life after shooting his wife and children? So what's the tragedy? What happened? What went wrong? As the California Institute of Clinical Psychology studied this case, they found out what went wrong. The researcher met the man's friends and family that uh, who said he lost his job to the, due to the America's economic crisis. And uh, after this crisis, uh, he had to sit down without a job for a long time. And even after reducing his previous salary amount, he didn't get any job. Then his house installment broke and he had his family lost his home. They survived a few months with less money and then he and his wife together decided to take their own lives. The case was concluded that he was programmed for success, but he was not trained to handle failures. Now let's come to the actual question. What are the habits of highly successful people? First of all, I want to tell you that you have, if you have achieved everything, there is a chance to lose everything. Once you get to the top, you don't want to get down. And once you are there, you're pressured to always stay to that level. And nobody knows how the economic crisis will hit the world. You know? The best success habit is getting trained for handling failures. You know, to parents, please do not train your children to be successful, but teach them how to handle failures and also teach them proper lessons in life. Learning high-level science and math will help them clear competitive exams, but knowledge about life will help them face every problem. 
and what do we how where do we get this knowledge and wisdom about life it is only through god's word reading his word that's why every day we remind each one of you to read your word god's word every day and keep it in your heart teach them about how money works instead of teaching them to work for money success is a lousy teacher failure teaches you more but i'm not saying that you should not strive for excellence or for success but always be ready for failures the reason why the young man took his life was that he had no peace in his heart in genesis chapter 1 verse 31 God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. In the beginning, God's plan for creation was all good, perfect, and he said, it's very good. But however, the peace, the wholeness, the harmony, which was woven into God's original creation was ruined. This peace was broken when Adam and Eve sinned against God. Their disobedience to God's command ruined the peace that was part of God's design. What happened to peace when Adam and Eve sinned? Adam and Eve experienced for the first time the loss of inner peace. The suddenly, the guilt and shame filled their hearts when peace was ruined. For the first time, they ate the, they, they ate the fruit, their eyes were open, and they realized they were naked, and they had to hid themselves and cover themselves with leaves. And there was, there, was, there was no inner peace in their heart. Secondly, their disobedience destroyed peace with God. First, the inner peace in themselves is gone. Now vertical, their peace with God was broken. The harmonious relationship with God in the garden was destroyed. Before eating the fruit, they shared an intimate relationship with God. But afterwards, they hid themselves from the, from the Lord among the trees in the garden. Instead, instead of looking forward to spending time with God, they were now afraid of His voice. Thirdly, their sin destroyed peaceful relationships. This time, uh, the horizontal relationship was broken. At first, the inner peace. Second, the vertical relationship with God. This time, the horizontal relationship between the two of them. Their peaceful union as <clears throat> husband and wife was ruined. When God confronted Adam with his sin, what did he do? What did he say? He blamed his wife. The woman you gave me, he made me eat of the fruit. So that was the first blame that he made on his wife. And fourthly, their disobedience broke the harmony between humanity and nature. This one, the peaceful relationship between humanity and nature was destroyed. God's economy was changed. Prior to their sin, Adam and Eve worked joyfully in the garden and they walked freely among the animals as Adam named the animals one by one. <clears throat> the curse of sin is that man has to work and sweat in order to live. So that's what happened. Previously, you can enjoy your life in the garden. Now you have to work in order to live. Secondly, for the woman, there's the pain during child, childbirth. This is the result of sin. But God was not powerless 
when peace was ruined. God made a way for peace to be restored. In Ephesians 2.13 to 14, it states, Now in Christ, you who were once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, dividing the wall of his hostility. And also in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. And also in Isaiah 53, 5, But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. You will never find inner peace until you have come to Jesus Christ. Only He can restore that peace with God. And also in John 16, verse 33, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. And another question pops up to our mind about restoring peace. How does God bring peace into our lives? How can peace be restored? Or how can peace, how can we have that peace in Christ? Or how can we apply the verse in Philippians 4, verse 7, the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. First, peace follows grace. Normally, the Apostle Paul starts his letter with grace and peace to you from our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. There's always the mention of grace and peace. And peace always follows grace. It never precedes it. You must have peace you, you cannot have that peace than grace because peace can never be experienced without the grace of God. Only to God's grace can you have that peace. Remember, Jesus is our peace. If you need peace, the only way to find it is to come to God, to Christ Jesus. And if you humble yourselves before God, he will give you that grace and that peace. God opposes the proud, but He gives grace to the humble. So if you need that peace, you humble yourself before God, and He will give you that peace. And in verse 14, John 14, verse 27, it tells us, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. The Lord Jesus did not leave us empty-handed. When He ascended to heaven, He sent the Holy Spirit, and He is in each one of us. If you have Christ in you, you have the Holy Spirit. If you accepted Christ, the Holy Spirit also comes into your heart. <clears throat> and we should have that peace, because peace is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. So if you have Christ, you have the Spirit, you should have that peace. You have to claim that peace in your heart. Secondly, peace grows by obedience. In Psalm 119, 165, Great peace have those who love your law, and nothing can make them stumble. If you obey God's word, His laws, and commandments, you will have peace 
you will not have trouble no, with the consequences of sin or punishment and even discipline. That's why we have number three, peace is cultivated through discipline. In Hebrews 12, 11, no discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. No discipline seems pleasant at this time. When you do something wrong, you will be disciplined. And when you are disciplined, you will not be at peace. You will fail. You will be under trial. When the coronavirus started in Wuhan, China last December 2019, it was not an accident. God has a plan and purpose. The world is ripe for judgment. The crisis should not take us by surprise. If you come to think of it, <clears throat> all the wickedness happening around us, happening around us, the corruption, the manipulation, the dirty politics, the greed, the world is ripe for judgment. <clears throat> and the Lord right now is calling our attention. You know? Even we as Christians, we fall short of God, of what God wants us to do. And sad to say that God should send this pandemic to awaken us, to shake us. But we should not be afraid, but rather be thankful because He gave us this time to reflect and to repent. And this is a time of discipline from the Lord. We should go back to Him and prioritize Him. No one is in real peace in this time. Nobody knows when this virus would attack us. No one is safe. And those who have it might have it again. And it is only by God's grace, mercy and protection that we are protected from this virus, even now. Unless the Lord would relent and be merciful, we can never escape this crisis. Fourthly, peace grows, peace comes through unwavering prayer. In Isaiah chapter 4, verse 6 to 7, this is our favorite verses nowadays. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, shall guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. When Paul wrote <clears throat> the letter to the Philippians, and when he wrote about peace, about joy and rejoicing, it was a time when he was in prison. Something ironic. And he did not even know whether he would be set free or if he would be sentenced to death, considering how justice is done during the Roman rule. And in, it is in the midst of this um, difficult time and uncertain situation that Paul was able to write about peace and joy, discovering the secret to peace in Christ Jesus. That's why he was able to continue on with the following verses as he wrote the Philippians. I'm not saying this because I am in need. For I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. 
I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through Him who gives me strength. Paul had found the source of joy that will never fail. It consists of an ongoing relationship with our recent Christ, who has already gone through the lowest point of human condition. And rooted in Christ's life, Paul experienced a peace and joy that nothing can take away. Whether he lives or dies, whether others praise him or shower him with love or con show him content, all is the same with him. Because his standpoint is always his relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. And he was able even to write, for me to live is Christ and to die is him. And actually he is ready to accept anything, whatever happens to him. And this kind of God-given peace and joy does not make natural sense. It takes a super Natural grace from the Lord. It is a gift from the Lord to have that peace from Christ Himself. It's a grace from the Lord. Some years ago, a pastor organized a weekend retreat in a nice hotel in the mountains. And uh, <clears throat> the retreat was mentioned during the church announcement and the pastor showed pictures of the nice hotel setting for the retreat. And it was uh, off season and they had a good deal for the price. And a young man who visited the church once or twice asked the pastor, can I go? The pastor said, sure, that would be great. Then he asked if his wife could go. The tone of his, of his voice indicated that he was a bit uh, ex excited. So the pastor said, definitely your wife can come. So Pete and Jessica came to the retreat. And the first evening, as they were sharing together, talking in, in a circle about faith issues, Pete said that he had some problems with what he called faith and God issues. Because he, his grandmother was a strong Christian, but she lived a hard life. But how could God allow such a thing to happen? So the, that was Pete's question during the, their small group gathering. And the pastor and the other members just sat there in their chairs, staring at their shoes, uh, hoping someone would come up with a good answer. And finally, another young guy on the retreat said, Pete, what about your grandmother? Is she a happy person? Pete said she was very happy in spite of the many difficulties she had gone through. Then the young man said, maybe that's the answer. God did not give your grandmother an easy life, but he did give her a happy and joyful life. That was the answer Pete needed to hear. And during that weekend, he and his wife became Christians. And afterwards, they teach in Sunday school. Then Pete went off to seminary to train to become a pastor. We all have problems and difficulties, but there is a peace of God that transcends all understanding. And this is available in our lives, no matter the circumstances. Last, um, 
March 31, my brother passed away due to COVID-19. He was one of the first few cases of COVID. March 13, when the president announced that uh, Metro Manila would be under ECQ, enhanced or extensive um, quarantine, community quarantine, this was also, also the time when my brother went to the airport to fetch his friend. And we are not sure if he got the virus there or somewhere else. Somewhere else, Because every now and then my brother goes to different places even during that time. And after a week, he was not feeling well. He has fever and he lost his appetite. And I remember that my sister... Took his, brought him his favorite food, she went to their house. And their family doctor monitored his sickness. He was given medication, but the, the sickness grew worse. So their family doctor has to make the right connection in order to get him a room in a hospital. Because during that time, he experienced shortness of breath and uh, they need to use a ventilator to help him breathe and there was a time when uh, he took took off the tube from his mouth due to pain and discomfort and at first we thought he could make it even our relatives uh, his oxygen at times would improve would show signs of improvement but further complications came, he didn't make it. We submit to the Lord's will, and we know he's in a better place right now where there is no pain, no sorrow. And also, I myself, during that time, March 13, during that week, I was not feeling well. The time that the president announced the ECQ, I already experienced fever and discomfort, and uh, as well as experienced the idea. Some of the few signs. And uh, we asked a clinic uh, near our place where I could have a blood test and x ray. And they told us not to go to this hospital near our place because there's a COVID case already. So he suggested another hospital where there is no uh, COVID case during that time. So before I was allowed to go to the <clears throat> uh, emergency room, you know, I had to pass through a tent. They have to interview me for many questions before they can have the, the blood test and the x-ray. So I had my x-ray and blood test, and it was normal. The doctor just prescribed vitamin and medicine for diarrhea. And after four or five days, my condition seemed not to improve. I still had the fever. It's still on and off. And <clears throat> somebody sent me a biver you know, to have a self-check if you have COVID. And one of the tests was that you... Hold your breath for 10 seconds, and if you don't cough, you, you have a good sign. You don't have the, the possibility of contacting the virus. So at times, I could pass the 10 seconds, but at times, I cough. And because of this, uh, with uh, not much improvement on my fever, I was went again to the hospital to ask for another checkup. But the doctor just prescribed another set of vitamin and asked me if I have shortness of breath. But during that time, there was no shortness of breath yet. But after a few days, for another three or four days, I experience shortness of breath. Whenever I go up um, upstairs, when I reach the, 
the second floor, I had I had a hard time breathing. I was catching my breath. So it made me worry. So I went back again to the hospital to be uh, tested and examined. But the doctor said, it's but normal. If you should go upstairs, you have uh, shortness of breath. But to me, it's not normal because previously, I did not experience that. And he asked me, he told me, if you want the COVID test, you go to the lung center or go to a bigger hospital to have the swab test. But if you go there, there's no guarantee you will not contact the virus because it's contaminated the place. And, but there was a time when I tried to go to a medical city and while, while I was on my way to go there, uh, my, I informed my sister I'm having a swab test. He, she told me not to go there yet because it was just announced that day that the doctors and the nurses themselves had the virus and the place is contaminated. So I went back and did not have the swab test. And, um, but by faith, you know, after a few days, my health improved. After some rest, the medications, and uh, even somebody close to us uh, gave us herbal medication. You know, and somehow, way, the Lord worked in me. I was released from this sickness. Whether it's COVID or not, I thank the Lord that now, yes, um, that allowed me to contact that disease. And uh, I believe it is God's grace and mercy that I was healed. It is why we are here today because of His grace and mercy. No. It's a reality that we are anxious of the virus. But let us claim the verse, be not anxious. But by prayer and thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. And that, that verse continues on with what Paul said, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, think of these things. Instead of focusing on being worried, Think of all the goodness that God has given to each one of us. Okay? And to summarize, how can we have peace? Peace follows grace. Peace grow, grows by obedience. Peace is cultivated through discipline. And peace comes through unwavering prayer. Now, as Christians, we are blessed to have our peace and hope founded in Christ. He keeps us where we are, but it should not stop us there. The same peace and hope should be shared to others. Given this pandemic, now is the perfect time to share this peace and hope. The world needs peace and hope in Christ now more than ever. No, as God does, does not want us to just keep that peace in our hearts. He wants us to share it to others. And now is a good opportunity to be able to share that peace and hope to other people around us. That's why let's not forget this sentence. What I have, I give to you. As God has blessed us with His peace, with this hope, let us share and give this peace and hope to others. The harvest is plentiful. Be a blessing to others. Now is the time to call or text your friend and be a blessing to him and to people around him. Okay. So let's have a word of prayer. Lord, we... Thank you for the opportunity to come in your presence this morning to hear your word. Thank you for your uh, goodness, your mercy, and your faithfulness that even today 
we can hear your word, we can come to you for peace and enable us to share that peace to other people around us, to our brothers and sisters, to people who do not know you yet. Lord, may you grant us your grace to be able to share the peace and hope you have given to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.